Now, if you Google the Manosphere, uh, the definition that you're going to get online is probably something along the lines of, uh, the Manosphere is a collection of websites, blogs, YouTube channels, and online forums promoting to varying degrees masculinity, dating advice, misogyny, and strong opposition to feminism. Communities within the Manosphere include men's rights activists. So these are the MRAs. Not very effective, uh, but they're out there trying to do something. The incels, which are the involuntary celibates. These are the guys that want to be with women but have absolutely no luck. Uh, the men that are going their own way, which are very similar to the incels, but I mean, technically they should have chosen to go the own way and not be sent their own way. So there's a distinction there that you have to consider. I covered MGTOW, by the way, in a chapter in my book, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. The pickup artists and the father's rights groups. Um, so those would be the main definitions you'll get if you search for that. So they just say, this is the manosphere. Okay, so they might technically say I'm in the manosphere because a lot of the conversations that I have, it might capture Jordan Peterson, it might capture Gad Saad, it might capture Andrew Tate, um, you know, by that definition. But most guys will disassociate from it because it has a very, very bad PR um, issue. Uh, anytime there's a shooting, somebody like a, a school shooting, somebody rents a van and drives over a bunch of people like that nerd did in uh, Toronto, they'll immediately blame the manosphere, okay? Um, and you'll notice in this definition you'll find online, they use the word misogyny, which is a very strong word. I don't think the manosphere is for the most part, misogynist, you'll probably find some misogynist in there. But generally speaking, I wouldn't say as a whole, the Manosphere is misogynist. I think that most, sorry, not most, I would say there's a good number of, of, of guys in the Manosphere that are genuinely uh, on point, are speaking from a good position of authority. And you should probably have a, have a listen to them. And I'll talk about some of the YouTube channels in a little bit. But that's a definition. Let me keep scrolling down here on some of the notes. So I've got a chapter in my follow-up book. I'm going to, I'm going to get into detail. It's about, fuck, it's 14 pages long right now. So um, maybe I'll whittle this down or I don't know, maybe I'll even add to it, but it's, but it's a little bit of a, a guide from the perspective as, of a writer. I'm not going to cover everything in this video. So here's a few of the problems. One of the things I was talking about when creating this video is I wanted to get into a lot of the issues with the Mano Swamp. And one of them is the drama red meat component. Um, it is prolific in this space. I've dealt with a bunch of different industries, credit card debt relief, collections, entrepreneurs, uh, young entrepreneur startup groups. I've, I spent a lot more time in entrepreneurs org than I did in the Mano Swamp, if I'm being honest. And it was a group of mostly guys. There were some gals in it who were also very effective and productive as well. But good friends would never slander each other publicly um, anywhere. Uh, they were often, you know, getting together for Christmas parties, introducing each other, family sort of thing. They'd have a pool party in the summer. Your kids would be running around. Very comfortable environment. They're the kind of people that you'd want to have over to dinner, you know, with your kids sitting at the table and you'd feel comfortable with them being there. I can't say the same for a lot of the Man of Swamp characters, right? Um, so... With EO moving into the Mano Swamp, I saw something that was really completely different. And it didn't hit me very quickly, but it but it hit me. <laughs> it hit me. Um, you know, you would see guys fight over the most trivial things, and then they would use their platform to manufacture drama between their audience and then the other creator's audience. Uh, in some cases, there have been guys in the manosphere that have had to take security measures to protect their family from the rabid lunatics that some of the other creators would mobilize. Um, it's not a very collaborative space. And even if it does collaborate, it doesn't seem to do so for a very long period of time. Um, in the time that I was there, I did almost three speaking gigs at a live conference. I definitely did two and I was lined up for a third. Uh, I walked away from that because that was turning into serious problems. I collaborated on a panel show twice, two different panel shows, both of which I also founded um, and had to leave them both as well. So, I mean, like even internally, when you work with people, there's still problems. Um, it's not a productive space. Like I said, it's got not only does it have a PR issue, but it has an internal issue with collaborating, bickering, infighting, straw manning, ad hom attacks, doxing. Underhanded childish behavior 
is actually very common. Some of you have probably seen it. Some of you will see it if you're newer to the space, but it is going to come your way. And if it has come your way and you're still around, I'm going to say this, you're stupid for sticking around. Okay. Um, it's not a place that you need to subscribe to. You you don't have diabetes. You don't have to stick around and have them keep selling, sending you medicine every single month. Okay. I know big pharma wants you on that model. They want your health on their plan. And there's maybe some degree where there's some creators in the mana swamp that wants your love life or your personal life hooked into their, uh, dopamine hits, you know, for example, you can learn what you need to learn and you can leave. Okay. The man of swamps like training wheels on a bicycle for you to learn basics around attraction, arousal, what women really respond to, how to maintain frame, how to keep the gals around. Um, you know, all of those elements, a lot of the stuff I've talked about in a book, a lot of the stuff I've talked about in my prior videos on this channel, my other channels, I've covered a lot. Um, I've been doing this since 20, 16 or 17. I mean, I started the channel in 2014 and it was about two years in. So maybe 2016 that I started having these conversations. And then that's when they sucked me in, right? I had about maybe 80 to 100,000 subs. That's when the Manosphere came for me. Like I didn't look for it. It just said, hey, we have the speaking event. Hey, let's collab on this sort of thing. And I was happy to do it because I wanted to help. I wanted guys to get the same clarity that I did. I'm a problem solving creature. I've always told guys that follow me for entrepreneur's advice, one of the most important skills you need to develop is your problem solving muscle. So I wanted to solve problems for myself and I saw it as, hey, there's some good resources here. So let's amplify them. There was a lot of guys that were just anon uh, bloggers or maybe just on Twitter um, using a, a pen name and I, I would amplify them. I would say, hey, you know, I've read your book or I like this about something that I've read from you on your blog. So let's, so let's amplify that on, you know, my channel that I'd introduce into my audience. And a lot of those guys are, you know, producing now as a result of that. So that's what I stepped into. A lot of, a lot of people that, uh, you know, are very interesting characters. Like I said, bickering, infighting, straw manning, very common people that befriend, befriend you, betray you, uh, is very disloyal and arrogant and stupid. It's, you know, it's a lot of things. Uh, we talked about amplifying drama. I think I talked about why I played in the sandbox, so I can kind of skip over that. Uh, I'll tell you why these groups stay underground. They never really go mainstream. One of the questions that I was always asked for quite a few years was, how do we get this mainstream? How do we get this to mo more guys? And the problem is, is you're never going to get it to more guys because most guys, they don't want to hear this. They just don't. It, it's, it's as soon as you, like, you know, if, if a guy's having a problem with his girlfriend and maybe her eyes are starting to wander and then you just come up to me and you go, well, you know, Bob, women don't care about your struggles. They hang out at the finish line and they pick the winner. And here's a video from Rich Cooper. You should check this out. They'll just look at you like you've got, you know, four eyeballs across your forehead and an antler sticking out that way. They just don't understand. They're not ready for it. They're only ready to receive these messages when chaos has hit their life. And that's, and that's how they usually find it. It's unfortunate that that's the way that guys operate. But it is what it is. That's how guys, you know, solve these problems. <clears throat> so it stays fringe because it can't organize, agree, and collaborate in a productive manner. It's like a bus with about 80 seats on it. And every member of the bus is trying to be in the driver's seat and constantly fighting over every little detail. Oh, why don't you debate me on this, that, or the other thing? It's one of my other favorites too. Let's have a debate. <clears throat> they focus on descriptions for the most part, but fail to provide solutions or prescriptions, which is what I've always been doing. Um, I won't have a conversation on a topic without offering you guys valuable solutions to that problem. I'm a solutions guy. Like I'll identify the problem, educate myself on it, learn how the rules work, and then I'll offer a solution to it. Just how I roll. Okay, but the difference is, is that the whole space knows that red meat sells, right? If you can if you can produce a good amount of red meat and get eyeballs with your thumbnails, titles and tags, you've got views. It's I'm going to tell you guys straight up, you want to create a YouTube channel and uh create drama between creators or even create like a news channel. I'm sure there's an opportunity out there to create a Mano Swamp news channel. Mano Swamp Daily, you know, you can call it and then you can break down all the drama that happens between all the creators. Because I, I bet you'd get eyeballs on that. People would watch that because people like drama. They like the car accident. 
Everybody looks at the stupid car accident, even when it's off the road. They just love that shit. I really hope you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to watch the full length podcast, you can find that over here, that clip's from. If you're newer to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe over here and pin down below in the top comment, you'll find a bunch of useful links to my website, my supplement line, books, and a bunch of other stuff. Have an amazing day. Peace out.